You can say that food is a language with many dialects. And the magical thing about flavors is that nothing gets lost in translation. India has added spice and color to South African cuisine, and this is celebrated by today's menu. In the kitchen today, I'm commemorating the 1860 Indian food legacy. I'll be showing you some old recipes that have been passed down through the generations and adding a new twist to some old favorites. On the menu, a traditional duck curry, a typical Andhra-style mixed vegetable curry, and for dessert, a sweet rice cake. I'm starting out with the dessert first, and for that, I've got a cup of white rice here. That goes into a pot. To that, 600 mils of cold water cinnamon stick and some saffron. Bring this up to the boil and cook until the moisture evaporates. This is an old favorite. I'm adding a new twist to it. I'm gonna bake this in the oven as well, but for now, add some milk. Stir the rice grains into the full cream milk and leave that to simmer until it becomes thick and creamy. Let's start with that traditional duck. This is one of the recipes my grandfather passed on. He was quite an adventurer, an army man, and a hunter and gatherer too. He loved to go hunting and duck was one of his favorite dishes. He'd often tell my mom just how he wanted it cooked. Sunflower oil going into the pot. I've preheated this pot already. To that, mustard seeds. They hit the oil and start to splatter almost immediately. And once they pop, they release this beautiful nutty flavor and aroma. To that, onions. To that, a teaspoon and a half of coarse salt. And some curry leaves. Saute the onions until they turn light golden brown. And this is always the most important step when you're making a curry. The onions golden brown, fragrant and aromatic. Push them over to the side of the pan. Garlic and ginger going on top. Stir that for a few seconds. It does tend to splatter a bit, but you want to fry off the excess moisture in the ginger and garlic. To this, add a tablespoon and a half of red chili powder. Actually, I'm adding two. I like it quite spicy. Heat the chili powder for a few seconds, and then add the duck pieces. I'm using free range duck for this and I'm using the quarters, drumsticks, and thighs. We grew up eating these traditional recipes, and my gran would be quite annoyed with my granddad because he insisted he knew exactly how these dishes needed to be cooked. To the duck, a teaspoon of turmeric. I've braised the duck, and it's sealed quite nicely. The spices are starting to stick on the bottom of the pan for the roasted spices. I've got coriander seeds, black pepper, cloves, a cinnamon stick, and dry red chilies. I've roasted the whole spices and ground them with some curry leaves in a coffee grinder. Now, coconut is purely optional. You can use it if you love coconut as much as I do, or just leave it out the recipe. This is what the spice paste should look like. It's quite dark brown in color, and it's really fragrant. Sprinkle that over. It does look a lot like coffee. It's gonna give us quite a dark, rich sauce. And stir that in. I've already roasted these spices, so you don't need to fry it with the onions and with the ginger and garlic. Fry it off for about a minute. Next, add some water. Cover the pot with a tight-fitting lid and leave that to simmer for about 45 minutes. The rice is thick and creamy. It's reduced by about a third. And it's pale yellow in color from the saffron. Add some sugar. And mix that around. Simmer that for about another five minutes until the mixture thickens. Switch off the heat and leave it to cool. That gives me time to tidy up my kitchen. I've got some lightly beaten egg yolk and stiffly beaten egg white here. Let's just have a look. The rice has cooled down. To this, add the egg yolk, and I've added a touch of sugar to this and beaten it until light and fluffy. Almost looks like custard. 
Lightly fold that through, very gently. And then add the stiffly beaten egg white. I've whisked this with some sugar as well. Just break that up. Don't lose patience or you'll get quite a heavy rice cake. Some cardamom. I'm using freshly ground cardamom for this. I love the flavor of ground cardamom. Pour this into a loose bottom cake tin. I'm using a 25 centimeter tin for this and I've greased and lined it. This is ready for the oven. Bake this off at 170 degrees Celsius for an hour. The duck's been simmering for about 45 minutes. Let's have a look. It's cooked down. Next ingredients going in, some chopped tomato. You can add either tamarind or lemon juice to this. My next curry has tamarind paste, so in the duck, I'm going to add some lemon juice. Lemon juice and tamarind remove the gamey flavor of the duck. Cover the pot with a lid, reduce the heat, and leave that to simmer for about 15 minutes. In the meantime, starting out with the traditional veg curry. We've got our mixed veggies here, and our ingredients, sunflower oil. To that, some mustard seeds, about a teaspoon, and then some cumin. Just a pinch. Once the seeds start to splatter, add the chopped onion. And to that, a teaspoon and a half coarse salt. This dish is a favorite in my home and it's much loved by our guests as well. The onions are golden brown. To this, add garlic. Red chili powder, a tablespoon going in. Heat the chili powder, add the potatoes. To that, medumbis or yams and green banana. And pour in some water. Cover the pan with a tight fitting lid. Reduce the heat. Let's check on the duck. That looks really good. The oil separated from the sauce and the tomatoes have softened. You can simmer this down until the gravy just coats the duck. Then you'd serve it with dal and rice. You could also serve this with roti. That's done, the cake should be ready. Let's get it out the oven. This smells heavenly. Leave it to cool in the tin. The potatoes look almost done. Stir that around. To this, I'm adding some gadra beans. And I've steamed these beans already. Steamed double beans, and double beans are my favorite. Peas, sprinkle that over. Tomatoes. And baby brinjals, I've fried these already. Leave that to simmer until the potatoes are cooked through and the gravy thickens. Cooking this curry takes me down memory lane. It reminds me of porridge prayers in Durban and this was always on the menu. To add the perfect tang to this curry, add some tamarind paste. This is a souring agent. It adds a lovely flavor. And lastly, some curry leaves. If you add them at the end, they retain their fresh aroma. I'm ready to plate this feast. The cake looks really beautiful. And to finish up, lightly dust this with icing sugar. And then sprinkle with tinted almonds. That should do it. Utica means jasmine. I'm garnishing this cake with some jasmine blossoms. They're my favorites. They're really fragrant with a hint of pink. The ladies in my family have done a really good job with keeping old recipes alive. They also had a talent to take simple ingredients and turn them into extraordinary wholesome feasts. I've prepared a traditional duck curry, a typical Andrite mixed vegetable curry, and for dessert, I've taken sweet rice and I've turned it into a delicious cake. I hope you enjoy the feast.